Hello guys and welcome. I am Nico Balanso and my groupmates for this activity are John Vincent Cruz, Marcel Cahandolong, Princess Italia Logatok, and Kimberly Sol. This is activity number 6 for our analytical chemistry laboratory and it is titled Candy Chromatography. In this experiment, we will use paper chromatography to separate and reveal the hidden colors in the dyes used to color candies. But before we do the activity, let's show first the materials needed. Now that our materials are ready, we will now do the procedures. First thing we have to do is to prepare the salt water solution. We can do this by mixing 1 8 teaspoon of salt into 3 cups of water. We have to shake it or stir until it is completely dissolved. This will be our chromatography solvent. We have to pour about 100 ml of salt water into the beaker or container glass. The second procedure is preparing the alcohol solution. We can do this by pouring rubbing alcohol into a clean container glass to a liquid level of 14 inches. Third step on the list is preparing two pieces of chromatography papers cut out into a size of 8 by 8 centimeters. After that, we will draw a line that is 1 cm away from one of the edges of the paper where we will mark 5 axes one fourth inch apart and write the colors of the candies to serve as label. Fourth step is sorting or separating the candies according to their color. Fifth on the list is removing the colors of the candies. We can do this by choosing which candies to analyze its color and place them into a clean plate. Next, we will use the pipette, or in this case, a toothpick, to put a single drop of water for each nip's color in the bottom of the clean plate. Then, we will put the nips on top of each water drop and wait for 1-2 to two minutes until the water removes the color of the candy. Now that we have a pigment from the candy, our next step is to dab that water droplet or pigment using a toothpick and apply that pigment to the filter paper. We have to apply at least two to three coats of this and we have to repeat this process for the other remaining colors. When the papers are finally dry, our next step is to fold them into half so that they stand up on their own. And we have to make sure that we do this vertically so that the line with the marks are near the bottom edge of the paper. The next thing we have to do is to tape the papers on a pencil and we will put this over the mouth of the beaker. We have to make sure that the sample are not directly touching the solution, leaving the solution level below the line of the sample. Now that our setup is done, the last thing we have to do is observe the upward progress of the solutions by means of capillary action. When the solutions are 1 cm from the top edge of the paper, that's the best time to remove the paper from the beaker and transfer them to a clean dry surface and let them dry. Now that we have our products, we are now going to calculate and solve for the retention factor for all the dyes of the nips. Some spots will be long streaks, and for cases like this, 
we have to approximate the center of the spot and use that point to solve for the retention factor. And when we are all done with the experiment, the last and most important thing we have to do is to clean the area and dispose the filter papers into the regular waste. In the process called chromatography, the dye scholar are seen to be climbing up the filter paper with both the salt water and the rubbing alcohol as solvents. They are aided by the capillary action in doing so. In respect to the two different solvents used, the dyes in rubbing alcohol have reached greater heights or peaks on the filter paper in comparison to the salt water solution, therefore gaining higher retention factor values. We can prove this through the values obtained for the rubbing alcohol and salt water solution respectively. Violet with 0.8 cm against 0.65 cm, 0.37 against 0.13 in red and orange, 0.50 cm against 0.23, and lastly, yellow with 0.07 cm against 0 cm. On the other hand, and with exception from all the other colors, the retention factor values of blue, both from salt water solution and rubbing alcohol, recorded 1 cm and it has the highest peak among our result. And what can we conclude from this activity considering that there are differences in our two chromatograms? Well, as a dye is attracted to the filter paper, the less it will climb up on that filter paper. If a dye is soluble in a solvent, the greater the height it will climb up on that filter paper. However, there are dyes which are more soluble in rubbing alcohol than in salt water solution like violet, red, and orange. That's why the retention factor values of these certain dyes are larger for the rubbing alcohol as solvent. And that my friend wraps up this activity. I hope you learned something and this is me again, Nico Balanzo, and my groupmates for this activity who exerted tremendous effort to turn this into success are Jan Vincent Cruz, Mars Erika Handolo, Princess Itale Lugatok, and Kimberly Sol. Until next time, God bless and thanks for watching.